Hi, and welcome to Squiz.com, the connected marketplace. Today, I'll be taking you through some of the changes we've made to the Squiz.com connector software in a 1.09 release and showing all the amazing new things that it can do. If you didn't already know, the Squiz.com connector is a free piece of software developed by us that allows a business to connect any of its business systems, such as accounting systems, enterprise resource planning systems, customer relationship management systems, and any other systems that involve databases or files that store data, and then to be able to transfer this data to and from the Squiz.com platform, as well as the Todex e-commerce platform. This in turn allows a business to trade effortlessly with other businesses on the platform in a highly automated fashion. In simple terms, the connector software saves and helps business to make more money by being able to automate data transfer. Now you've got a basic understanding of what the connector can do, let's look at the changes we've made to the 1.09 release. If I open up the squiz.com connector software, such as we have here, one of the new changes we've added to the connector is this new tab called Supplier Account Inquiry. And within the connector application, then we can use this new area to be able to query out purchase orders from any connected business systems we have set up. Now this in turn is helpful so that we can view the details of these purchase orders as well as submit the purchase orders across to suppliers in other systems through the use of squiz.com. So to take an example, firstly in the adapters and messages, so I've set up a new adapter here for the example company we have called Quickie Mart and hopefully you know it from The Simpsons. So within this generic adapter, in the settings what I have done is I have configured it to read from one or more spreadsheet files. In the data exports, I've configured that to be able to read from purchase orders from CSV files, you may also know them as uh, spreadsheet files. So if we look at this, in this data export, it's going to retrieve out purchase orders from a file that contains them, and then we found all the different data in the field. So if we look at the actual data, so in uh, on my computer here, I have a folder, uh, which contains all the different kind of data and then we can go into this file and then within my spreadsheet application here we can see we've got two purchase order lines within this file. Now I've got configured in the connector to be able to retrieve data from this file within the supplier account inquiry we can now query purchase order data from the file. So we have a supplier and, and it's a reference to an account and then we can choose the date range that we want to find orders by. So we can go we want to find orders between the 29th of January and say the 5th of October. Now the other part is that we first need to, we need to choose the adapter where we want to get the purchase orders from, so we choose Quickie Mart, and then we click on the search records button, and now we can see that it has found those two order lines that we had in that spreadsheet file. So if we open that up and click on one of them, we can now view all the details of the purchase order in a much friendlier format than if it was in the CSV file. Now note that you can retrieve these purchase orders not just from spreadsheet files, but you can get them from databases or any system. So the systems that we could have got it from uh, can be listed here. So all these systems are supported directly by the connector, or we can configure it using the generic adapter to get the data from databases or different kind of data files um, based on the system that your data is stored in. So once that has taken place, we can view the details of the purchase order, we can see some uh, information about it such as pricing, we can see the delivery and billing addresses of that purchase order, so whether the goods being ordered need to be delivered to, as well as we've got lines, so there's one line within this order that contains all the details of what is being ordered. So in this case, we want to order some pink donuts, and then we can see we've got a product code, we've got some pricing that we think it's going to cost in order to buy those products. So that gives you an idea of all the information that can be found in a purchase order and then queried and retrieved within the connector. Now, what is the overall point of this? Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, first, a person for a business can then find and view information about a purchase order and maybe they don't even have to log into the associated system that's storing that information or that data is not even available to be viewed, such as if a different system exported purchase orders out in a different format. So the connector provides that user-friendly interface in order to be able to view that information. The next new feature we've added into connector is the ability to then push these orders across into the Swiss.com platform and then allow it to be procured and converted into sales orders for the supplier organization. So that's where the real power for using this feature is available. So if you look at this diagram, in a typical use case, we're going to have one business that buys products off another business. So Quickie Mart here is the customer, and then the donut factory, which is the business that uh, manufactures or creates donuts or imports donuts, is the supplier. 
in the real world, Quickie Mart may need to buy more donuts for its stores. So it can raise a purchase order within its own business system that it uses, such as a point of sale system, some kind of accounting system, or it could be a database management system, or it could be a website that they have they've built themselves. Whichever circumstance, a purchase order is then generated and then Quickie Mart needs to get that purchase order across to the donut factory. Now, in manual terms, they could generate a PDF file of it or they, and then they could email it across or they could phone up the donut factory and ask them to manually order the products. But the, new, the feature that we're adding into the connector here is where the connector itself can then query the purchase orders from the Quickie Mart system, wherever they're stored in, pull the purchase orders into the connector and then the connector, can we can then push the purchase orders up into squiz.com where they can be then turned into a sales order. And then the sales order can be then sent across down to the donut factory into their system and they could have the connector themselves installed which can then push the sales order into their own system. So there's no manual intervention by a user in order to getting the order data across from the customer's systems across into the supplier system. So it eliminates a lot of the double data entry that would otherwise happen. Now, once that's done, the sales order, when it is transferred across from Squiz, there's a copy of it. So the sales order goes into the Donut Factory system and the sales order then gets returned back to the connector. And then that sales order can be viewed as well as update the original purchase order within the connector software, which can then potentially import that purchase order back into the system with the most accurate and up-to-date pricing and details of the purchase order. So that's the scenario that we'll be looking at today in the procurement side. And if I go back into the Connect software itself, within the supplier account acquiry, once we've found uh, one or more purchase orders, and we can find purchase orders also by searching on different IDs, such as we could do it by the unique ID of the, uh, of the purchase order. There's a now box where we can tick, and then we can then decide to procure these orders. So we tick the box, and then we click on the procurement button here that allows us to send it to squiz.com, and now open up a new window. So in here, we can now specify the supplier that we want to send the purchase order to to have those goods ordered that are listed within the purchase order. So the ID, we need to find the ID of the supplying organization that we want to use. So, so if we go to squiz.com and Abu, who's the person that's logged in, if he goes and finds the Quickie Mart and goes into their profile, if they've already established a connection to the donut factory, in which case they have, then we can go into the relationship details and we can get the organization ID of the donut factory that's registered in the squiz.com platform. So with that done, we can now plonk that into the text box there and then we can choose in order to then submit this purchase order across to the donut factory. So if we click the send and procure orders, we can see that the status has now changed from unsent to sent and the order has successfully been sent across to the donut factory. No copying, no emailing, no phoning required. It's as simple as that. Now, as a part of that, the sales order that we talked about that got uh, generated within the squiz.com platform has also been uh, made available here. So we can now see the ID of the sales order that was generated in the squiz.com platform and then we can use it to reference. Not only that, but if we click on that, we can now view the details of the sales order that was generated for the donut factory. So we can see the unique ID of the order. We can find any information about that that was uh, returned back. Uh, we can also go into the addresses and make sure that the address data was uh, correct. We can see the line that got generated and if we had any surcharges, so we can see that Donut Factory has put a surcharge on the order and that's going to cost $11 in order then to have these goods delivered back to the Quickie Mart and into their store. So we can see details about that. So that gives you an example of how you can push and pull purchase orders and sales orders through to the squiz.com platform using the connector software itself. Now, if we go back to here, there's a few different options that we have got available once we submit these orders. So, when we send up this purchase order, we could choose to save the purchase order to the connector after success. So, in the connector itself, we have a separate section called purchase orders. And once the, that purchase order has been successfully sent, we can also choose to have it saved back in the connector. And that may be relevant if we want to then import the purchase order back into a different system. We could set up another adapter in order to, for that allowed to be taken place. Additionally, there's a setting 
be able to update the original purchase order with the details of the sales order that we return. So we're talking about pricing, we're talking about additional information such as freight information that came back with the sales order as well as the sales order codes themselves. So that's really relevant for once the sales order has been returned and then we, when we save the purchase order to the connector, we can then update that purchase order with additional information. The other part is if we were importing multiple purchase orders at the same time, we can choose whether or not once one order fails to import, whether it should try to import the next order. So that way it allows a person to fix up the orders before it continues down the list because the same error may have uh, occurred in those orders. We can take an example of seeing how these work in action. If we go and choose multiple orders to procure, uh, we enter the organization ID of uh, the donut factory and note that if we wanted to send this to a different supplier we could just set the ID of that different supplier. We'll tick the first box and then so that means we'll allow the purchase order to be saved as well as updated with the details of the sales order and the third box so that if an error occurs then no, no more orders will continue. So if we now click the send and procure orders option we can see now that both orders have been successfully sent across, so you can see the new order IDs themselves. And if we go into the connector application, we can now see those two purchase orders have now been saved to the connector itself. So we can now go into here and view the details of the purchase order. We can now see that the reference to the sales order has been set based on the sales order data coming back. The pricing has been updated. The lines have been set as well as the surcharges added to the order. So it's the same information we saw in the originating sales order. And then that allows this order, this purchase order, to potentially be uh, imported back to its own system. Or this could be imported and updated against the original purchase order that contained that purchase order number. So there's a lot of flexibility that is available. It just depends on the systems that can support saving the purchase orders if they want to. So that gives you an example of how we can use the supplier account inquiry to retrieve and query purchase orders from a system or a data source or in this case a spreadsheet file and push those orders up to a supplier in the system. Now in squiz.com from the supplier's point of view, they're going to get a notification describing the new sales order that got raised within squiz.com and if it went submitted across to their own system, so in this case this order did not, well, as the supplier can also see all the orders and all the details of the order within squiz.com as well when looking at the details of the sales order there. So we can see that the, the order and the details of what was purchased and the additional freight that was uh, placed there. So that's also helpful for suppliers as well as customers to be able to see the orders through squiz.com without having to log into any separate systems or being able to access it anywhere where a web browser can be found. The next new feature we've added to the connector is the ability to retrieve purchase orders from XML or JSON based files or web services. Now what this means is that we can get purchase order data out of these JSON XML data types and those data types are typically returned from APIs from different systems such as e-commerce systems or uh, accounting systems such as Xero uh, that have online APIs but they could also be uh, generated by systems that export out data. So if we take an example, if we go back to our Quickie Mart generic adapter, the generic adapter has this thing called data source types. And data source types denote the kind of data that we can retrieve. So we want to get out data from JSON or XML. So I've created a, a XML files data source, and then I've told it to go to the file system and then to retrieve the data from files that are stored in this directory called connected data quickie mart. So I've created a couple of new files here that store information about the purchase orders that were previously stored as CSV files. So if we look at this supplier account purchase orders XML file, we can open that in the browser and then we can see in the browser, here's the exact same purchase order data that we saw in the CSV file, but it's just in a different form. It's in a tree data structure as opposed to a tabular data structure. We're going to now query the data out of this XML file using this data source type. And if we go to the data export, the purchase orders data export, within the purchase order, I've selected to get the data out of that file that we were talking about. And then within it, it's going to go find all the records within the file based on this record set path. So after doing all that, configuring the adapter and restarting the connector. If we then go back into supplier account inquiry, we can do a search and now it's searching on the XML file data. And then we can view the exact same order data as if it was just like uh, coming out of the CSV file. 
So now that we can see all the information that is coming out, we can then once again submit these purchase orders off to Squiz where they can then be procured and sent across. Now if we're modifying the data within these XML files, so in the reference number field, if we put that customer ABCD, then if we went back to the connector and did another search, you can see the same data being queried out of the connector as what was being modified in the XML file directly. So it's an, another easier way to be able to see the same kind of data in these files in a more user-friendly way through these windows. And it makes it very good for to be able to find these orders and especially if systems are generating lots of XML files or they're coming from different kind of web services, we can now query that out and check that everything's coming out that it should be and then submit multiple orders. One major improvement we've added in is there may be times when a system generates out multiple XML files which store purchase order data across multiple files. So if we look in the directory where we're storing all the data, we can see that we've now got two files here that contain purchase orders data. So we've got one that contains the orders for the first and second purchase order and then we've got another file that can store orders for the third and fourth purchase order. Now what we want the connector to do is to go through all the purchase order files in here that could have purchase order data based on the file name starting with a text string. So in this case everything that says supplier account purchase orders and then we want to read through that and query out all the purchase order data. Now to do that we can do now go into the generic adapter and for the JSON XML data source, if we then, once we've configured that for the purchase orders data export, we can now put in another character, which is the star character. And now this allows the connector to find all orders that have this, this supplier account purchase order text in front of it. And then whatever the file name is after that, the connector is gonna match on that file and try to read the purchase order data and find the data within the, uh, find the records within this path set here. So once we click the save button and close this dialog and then run the supplier account inquiry again, we can now see that the connector has been able to find four purchase orders. Two purchase orders came from the first file and the third and fourth orders have came from the second file where we can see all the information about that. So this is just one example where you can use the connector to read from multiple sets of files that can store the same kind of data. So we could easily done the same process, not just for just getting purchase orders, we could do it for getting contracts out or categories or products information or or payment times. Any of these data exports, all the different data that the connector supports exporting from a business system or XML, JSML based data sources, we can now use that in order to use the wildcard operator to find files that are starting with a piece of text or if we had that wildcard at the start of the text then it could find all files that have this text within the end of the file name or we could put the wildcard in the middle to find all files that start off with supplier account text and then end with the purchase order. So it's quite flexible on how it can match on files. So using this setting that has enabled us in the supplier account inquiry to be able to retrieve multiple files which could be saved or exported from another system then a purchasing person can then go through, tick the boxes of all the orders they want to procure and then send them across to squiz.com to the relevant suppliers or without having to manually send multiple files and all being able to do it in a more automated fashion from within a business's own computer network or wherever they've got their connector installed. So it's a, it can be a quite a useful feature for when, especially when systems, certain business systems don't support directly pushing orders into the squiz.com platform. And that wraps up this release video. If you want to find more information about it, you can always go to the doc center for the connector, which is found at squiz.com slash docs slash connector. And if you scroll down to the version history section, you can find all the information about this release and all the other minor improvements and bug fixes we've made to the connector there. And if you've got any other questions, you can also go to the feeds within squiz.com and post your questions about the connector within the er Squiz Early Adopters feed. Now, if you want to access and download the connector, you can simply just go to squiz.com, go to the apps page, and where you can download both the connector application, as well as the connector host service, which are both required uh, pieces of software to run it on a, any Windows machine that supports the .NET uh, library version 4.61 or higher and you can find out more information about installing the connector if you go to the connector documentation and click on the connector installation notes that are available there. That gives you a wrap up of the 1.09 release of the connector. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Until next time, happy squizzing.